to those who do not know what today is. Today marks the one year anniversary that I lost my daughter. The day that I lost the fight in court after four and a half years of trying to get her back. I went through so much, I went through so much criticism, so much falsely and wrongfully accused of accusations and allegations. Everything that I went through. Even though I did my very best not just in, not just as in doing what i need to do as a parent but also digging for the truth documenting that putting facts into it and also bringing it to light to the to the authorities to take care of that and no one did anything about it not my lawyer not the courts not even the police. No one did anything to justify my daughter and myself. And not once did I ever make this case about myself. It's always been about my daughter. Because that was what was at stake. And that's what was my focus. My drive. My determination. Everything. That little girl... Is what kept me going. Day after day. Week after week. Month after month. Year after year. And that's. And she's still keeping me going. Even though I lost the damn fight. In court. I still have a job. That I'm obligated to. And that means bettering myself. For my daughter. Even though she'll be 18 when I see her again. At least I can have myself prepared for then. Down the road. Because you never know what to expect after this. But I know one thing. Is that I know the truth. I've seen all my door co my court documents. From my attorney. And all those black strips. That have been blackened out. You think I'm just going to leave it like that? No. I bought some equipment. I dug for the truth. I put it under an infrared light. To see through that black lining. And I know. Who accused me. I know who put shit in the paper. I know who falsified evidence and documents. I know the fucking truth. You really think I'm just going to sit back and just be like, it is what it is? No. I'm not going to do that. And I didn't do that. I know the truth. I know everything of everybody involved that fucking did their part. And even though I have every right to be pissed off and angry and just heated... Because I did everything that was required of me and expected of me beyond the expectation that anybody thought I could deliver at. Am I still in pain? You damn fucking right I am. Am I still grieving? You bet your fucking ass I am. Am I still saddened? You bet your fucking ass I am. When people say I understand, you don't understand. And all and the reason why my daughter was taken away was the simple fact because of a bad choice that I made almost seven fucking years ago. Seven years ago. My first time ever getting in trouble with the law. First time going to jail. First time being put on probation. And yeah, it was domestic violence. 
But you know what? the more that I see it as that, the more bullshit I see from it. Because do you know why? Because for the full three years I did probation and domestic violence classes, it was always put, oh, it's Jose, it's about what you did. It's about your action and this and that. And do you know what? I see through that. I saw what I did. And I held myself accountable. But do you know what? There is a lacking side to this. Because domestic violence isn't always a one-way streak. It is a two-way streak because domestic violence happens when there's two people involved. And do you know what? If I was a naturally, uh, a natural person that was, you know, thrived on anger, thrived on, thrived on rage, always wanted to inflict harm to someone, that's what I would be doing right now. It wouldn't just stop at my daughter's mother. It'd be every after relationship after her. And I've been through four to five different women after my daughter's mother. And not once have I ever committed another domestic violence. Not because I've learned. It's because I chose to change. Because I got tired of being angry. I got tired of being the way that I was. Not because of everybody else's, of what they project of what they think of me it's because of myself. I got tired of being that person because I wanted to better myself. And here's the thing. The way that I feel in the in what I have to live my life now, I don't wish that upon anybody. I don't wish it upon that on my on my worst enemy. But here's the one thing that I will say. What's done is done. I'm moving on. Not completely, but I am pursuing in that. But also to the individuals to the to the individuals of who were involved who stood by CPS that glorified actions that was never taken. And never done. Is simply based on my fucking past. Which was not irrelevant no more. I have every right to be mad at you. I have every right to be pissed off at you. But you know what? Here's the thing. Me being pissed off and me being angry. It's not going to get me nowhere. That's why I'm trying to move on. I'm not staying stuck. I'm bettering myself. But here's one thing to the individuals, to all the individuals that were in on it, that lied about it, and did everything wrong and got my daughter taken from me. What comes around, goes around. And another thing is, the only thing that I can do is pray for you and hope you the best. And you're probably asking why you're probably asking yourself of whoever's watching this, why would you say that? Because they done you wrong. It's not because I forgive and it's not because I forget. It's because I want to move on from it. And also because karma came to me. Karma came to me. And she said, you have done your punishment of which I have given to you. You have done everything that you could do for your daughter. You have served your consequences and you have dealt with the repercussions and you served it well. But do you know what also karma told me? Carmen told me that she has a lot in store for the people of the individuals who were in on my case and that did wrong to me. And what she said, I don't have to worry about any of that because it's in her hands, not mine. And do you want Karma also said to me, to, and this goes out to the individuals that did this. Karma said that she's going to fuck you up more than what I could ever could humanly possible so this whole time you thought about me being a violent person and everything like that 
Anything that I could do to you as a, as humanly possible would look like child's play in karma's eyes. The only thing that I can do is pray for you because what you soon will face in your life, I cannot help you with because that is on you because you're the one that made the choice to do what you did. You're the person that done it, not me. Do I count on that? No, I don't because I don't want anything bad for anybody. The only thing I want in anybody's life is happiness. So with that being said, I hope you the best. And I hope that you are ready for when karma comes knocking on your door. And you open up that door and a whole wave of a fucking shitstorm covers your whole fucking sunny sky and your life just turns to fucking shit because of your own actions of what you've done am I gonna feel bad for you when that happens no do you know why because I'm not a part of it because karma said that I have no involvement in it because it's their doings not yours And on top of that, my daughter, Avelina, the truth will come to her. I have all the documents, all the documentation, all the papers, I have everything. And I have kept in a journal that I have stashed somewhere safe and secured so nobody can get to it. Why? Because that is the only proof that I have for my daughter. So whether it's from her peers, from the case, her foster mom, the CPS worker, all the CPS staff, or who in the fuck ever fills her head with shit and saying like, your dad's a piece of shit. He's nothing but a violent person, this and that. That's why you got adopted out of this and that. Okay, you'll give her that shit for 10 years and I'll give her the full documentation of proof and truth out of all honesty and I'll let her see that I'll let her read it and when the time comes she'll make the judgment call on that but I can tell you one thing knowing my daughter she's exactly like me she's not going to take that well and then you're going to have a lot of fucking answering to do It's the way that life works. It's the way karma works. Am I in pain every day? You damn right I am. But you see, I don't let the pain weaken me. I use it. It's what gets me through every day. It what makes me stronger. It what it what makes me mentally stronger, emotionally stronger, socially stronger, spiritually stronger, even financially stronger. Even though I lost my world, I lost the most important person in my life. I still willed myself to keep pushing forward, keep moving forward. And let me tell you something, for a person of my stature, of being a type 2 diabetic and an amputee, and still willing to get up every day, go to work, take care of myself, provide for myself and still hold on to hope and better myself every day there's not that many le people like that left in the world so to all the individuals that were in on this 
when it's your time. I hope you look at this as a life lesson. Don't do wrong on to others if you don't want wrong done on to you. Because it will happen. And it's going to happen when you least expect it. No matter what. Because what goes around comes around. And I am a firm believer in that. And to everybody that has kids that are friends of mine, do me a favor today. Which you probably do this every day, but I'm just saying it for me. Because you know what, what's gone on in my life. If you have kids, if you have grandkids, nieces, nephews, or even little cousins, take a moment out of your life and hold them close. Hold them closer than you ever thought possible. Love on them. Show them that you love them. Love them and miss them like you're never going to fucking see them again. Because in today's world and society, I am living proof. I am living proof that no matter what you do, within accordance to what you are required to do as a parent, you can still get your kid taken away. And that's how fucked up the world is. You can be a parent or both parents can have very successful jobs or careers, have a house, have cars, have financial security, everything that a child needs and wants beyond their own expectation, wants, or needs, you can still get your kid taken away. And that's what needs to change. That's what needs to stop. And... You know, er, CPS says everything of what's best for the child. I don't believe that. Because here's the thing. What's best for the child is for at least one of the parents that has their head on right and is doing everything possible and not out here fucking around with time and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's what's best for the child is a parent that has their shit together, that's doing the right thing, that's taking the necessary steps to have have what the child needs. That's what's best for the child. If that child has a home, whether it's with that parent by themselves or they're living with family. It's about having that necessary stuff for the child. So if I'm a parent that's living with my mom or my dad or at my cousin's with my girlfriend or with my wife, with my best friend. That's what matters is that you have a roof for your child over their heads, have their own room, you feed them, provide for them, bathe them, clothe them, just like you would do if you had your own place. That is the fucking principle. And that's what I had many, many, many times. Many of times. I had that for my daughter. But it still wasn't good enough. It still wasn't good enough. You can be a struggling parent that lives with family, that works a full-time job. Or you can have a successful career or a successful job and have money and have your own place, whether it's an apartment or a duplex or a house that you bought. 
and have cars and everything that a child needs or wants, you can still get your kid taken away. That's my point. Whether you're fully set or you're not, you can still get your child taken away. And that's the point. That's the principle. That's what needs to change. That's why CPS needs to take a step back and reevaluate their whole fucking process across the board on how they deal with case by case basis. And here's the thing it's not case by case basis, it's by generalization. It's a generalization from what's what's most acceptable for the child by their standards and what's not by their standards. And what's acceptable by their standards is that the child should always be with the mother. And the father shouldn't. That's what needs to change. Do you know why? Because a lot of men my age wouldn't blink an eye to even fight for their kid. They wouldn't care to take care of their kid. To raise that kid. Provide for that kid. Their own kid. Or their, their girlfriend's kids. You know, whatever the case may be. I am living proof that there is still hope for men in this fucked up world and this fucked up society of how people view people. You know, I went from a battered child in a childhood to dropping out of school my fucking beginning of my junior year because I want to leave an abusive household. Made an adult decision at the age of 16 Dropped out of school, started working, never went back. I struggled, struggled, struggled. Got into a toxic relationship, had a child, changed my ways, starting to, but not fully. But then, end up getting in trouble with the law. I went to jail, got out, put on probation, did my classes, lost my fucking laid, almost died. Came back from a very bad health crisis, started working full time. Got my head in the game and out of my ass, on top of my shoulders, went to every court date, went to every probation hearing, every court hearing, every visitation. I made every single birthday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, St. Paddy's Day, Easter, school function, you fucking name it. Sick or not, hospitalized or not, I was there. And get and, and also meeting another person in my life, which she said that she would help me no matter what. And then in the end, when things got too fucking tough, she went the fuck off. You know what? Fine. Because that kind of person I don't want or need in my life. I want someone that's going to bring me the fuck up, not leave me the fuck down. When I'm bringing their, their, their asses up. You see that's another thing. That I've changed about myself. Is. I am very careful with who I associate with in my life. Because I want. People in my life. That are going to help me bring me up. Just as much I will with them. That's the thing. There's no true meaning of friendship anymore. There's no trust. There's no honesty. There's nothing like that anymore. Because people got lost in their own fucking ego and self-righteousness and selfish fucking ways. And say, oh, it's all about me. It's all about me. And fuck everybody else. You know what? I'll care for someone. But if you're just going to keep throwing excuses at me and... Saying this and saying that and not taking action to better yourself. And you expect a fucking handout every time. That's not being a friend. That's not That's not being proactive. That's not being productive. That's not 
That's not taking yourself seriously. And you want to be honest? Was I was I ever a violent person? To be honest, no. Because I was if I was a true violent person, I wouldn't be out here. I wouldn't be working, having my own place to live, and you know, having what little that I have. I wouldn't be out here. I would be in prison for the rest of my life, probably on death row. And that's the thing. There's no middleman. There's no half-assing about that shit. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And, you know, thinking back of everything in my fucking domestic violence classes that I've learned, saying, you know, Jose, it's about what you did. It's about what you did. It's about what you did. Okay, I understand that. And I, and I see that. And I've learned from that. And I've hold myself accountable. But yet, on the other side of it, there's a two side. There's two sides of a coin. And that other side was never talked about. Never looked at. Ne never solved. Because when it comes to domestic violence, it's a two-way street. And that's the thing that is not normalized in today's society. What's normalized in domestic violence in today's society is that it's always the guy's fault. When that is so beyond the fucking truth. There are women out there that do domestic violence just as much as men. And, and you know, there's a lot of surveys and studies done... On men and domestic violence relationships that 43% of, of domestic violence cases are where men are the victim. But nothing said about that. Nothing's taking action from that. When, but when a woman is beaten, battered, hit, stabbed, or grabbed, or anything like that of within a woman, it hits the news outlets, the media waves, social media, everything like that. Now, this might be just ranting and raving, but also fucking true, and it's cold hard facts. I went from an abused, battered child to an adolescent to, you know, a one-time fucked-up individual that did a lot of fucked-up things, yes, I admit it, to... Transitioning himself into being a better person and stayed that way. It's been almost seven years since I've done it. And not once. I've hit fucking jail again. Cops call on me. Went to court. All that shit. It's like I said. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And I chose not to do it. Not just because it's wrong not because I've learned from my past it's because I've changed myself I got tired of being angry all the time I got tired of being angry for sometimes not even a damn thing just because I wanted to be angry I have literally changed myself full circle and that's why I have gained so much knowledge so much was wisdom, so much education, not just from my classes, but within a life experience of itself, socializing with people every day, whether it's strangers, acquaintances, friends, family, coworkers, doctors, you know, whatever. People can still change. I'm living proof of that. And you know, what's done is done. The past is the past. And that's not what defines me. The only time it will define me if I kept on doing it over and over, relationship after relationship. And that's not what has happened. And despite all that, that's the main reason why I got my daughter taken away. It's not because I couldn't take care of her. It's not that I couldn't provide for her. It's not because I didn't have her basic essentials that she needed. It's simply because of my one-time thing that I did 
of a criminal act is what defied me of getting my daughter back. That's what it was. And the reason why my CPS case, my CPS caseworker didn't like me because I called her out on things that she was doing that was illegal. I showed her documentation. I showed her the consequences. I showed her what laws and codes and areas of stuff like that within Oregon state law of, you know, that's a felony. That's a misdemeanor. That's a criminal act. That's breaking the law. I told that to her, my attorney, judge, circuit court, the, the even the fucking cops for Christ's sake. Nobody did a fucking thing about it. No one did. Even though I showed them the fucking cold hard facts. Nobody blinked an eye on it. At it. No one did. I had many opportunities to be able to still have my daughter in my life, whether it's in my custody or not. My cousin had my daughter for the first 16, 16 months of the case when it first opened. My cousin said, if you sign your rights over, I'd be more than gladly to raise your daughter and you can see her whenever you want. That's all I ever wanted. Yeah, it would suck that I want to have, you know, custody or rights of her. But the main thing is, is that I would be able to see her every day, get to call her, get pictures of her, video chat her, you know, shit, even postcards, cards in general. You know, I would get to see, you know, see things that she made at school, little drawings, her fucking homework, you know, videos of her going, you know, doing plays or music class or gymnastics, you know, what the fuck ever. Things that she would do at home at my cousin's house of like paintings, macaroni art, all that shit. All that shit that parents would want to see in their lives and have in their lives. I'd be more than willing to sign my rights over to my cousin. And you're probably asking yourself, why didn't you do it? Because both parents have to be on board for that. And guess who wasn't on board? The mother. So when that happened, I had to take it upon myself to do whatever it absolute took to get my daughter back by myself. By myself. If her mom was on board to signing her rights away to my cousin, that would have been the end deal of it all. And I want to have to fight my ass off for four and a half years. Not saying that it wasn't worth it. It was totally worth it. But yet, a lot of shit could have been, you know, prevented. You know. For once, I, you know, like, I, I, I would like to hear. Hear, hi, daddy, I miss you. Hi, daddy, I love you. Hi, daddy, good morning. Daddy, can we make breakfast? Daddy, can we go to the park? Daddy, can we go out somewhere? Can we, can we go have fun? Can we go to the store? You know, I've been dying to fucking do that. For four and a half years, I got to see my child one day a week for a fucking hour. And do you know how many times that is in a year? That's 48 hours in a year's time that I got to see my daughter. That's equivalent of two days. Within a year's time. For four and a half years it was like that. I never had unsupervised visits. I didn't have overnight visits. Nothing like that. It was always supervised because they think I'm going to end up beating my kid. And it's all because of that one act that I did almost seven years ago. 
Yeah, was it in front of my daughter? Yes. Was that very wrong of me? you damn fucking right it was. But did I hold myself responsible and accountable? Yes. Did I have to go through the punishments and the repercussions, the consequences of that? Yes, I did. Did I make it? Yes, I did. Did I did my time and serve my time for it? Yes, I did. Did I make a change in my life to not be that person no more? Yes, I did. See, this whole thing of my past, of what I did, has no irrelevance over the last six years. I never went to jail again for it. I never got in trouble for it. I never had that in any other relationships after my daughter's mother. But yet, because of that happening that one time, obviously it's still irrelevant. And how? Beats fucking me. It really does. But you see, here's the thing. Is that they won't give my daughter back to me because of my... Domestic violent act that I did towards my daughter's mother and my daughter was a witness of that But yet they're gonna give a mother That's an addict That that got our child taken away in the first place because of drugs Gives her right back to her literally a year later when since she's in transitioning of sober living in and out of treatment on and off of drugs and give her reunification process. And yet she's still fucking around with the wrong people. She has a bad fucking boyfriend. And she's still doing drugs. And not doing what she's supposed to be doing. But yet they're going to give the daughter back to her while she's doing that. But yet here's dad over here. Doing everything in his absolute fucking power. And doing everything that he's supposed to be doing. Even beyond the call of duty of what... The, of what he is expected to do. And yet. I don't get a single unsupervised. Or overnight visit. You see. I kept quiet about this. Ever since I hit the fucking media with this. A year ago. You know. I basically said. I lost my daughter. That's the end. I never opened up about this to anybody. I never told anybody I never told them the shit that was not presented in court that was taken from documentation what which was buried and hidden which is the truth and there's still more than what exceeds in this video that I'm doing right now there's a whole bunch more You see, if I got my daughter taken away because I didn't do what I was supposed to be doing and I was fucking around and I didn't pertain to my obligation, that's one thing. Of course, I would have every right to have my fucking daughter taken away from me because it shows that I'm irresponsible and not accountable. But that's not what it was. I was doing everything. And even though I did all that, it's, it, it was never about me having the essentials for my daughter. It was never about that. It was never about having a full-time job, keeping a full-time job, having a place to live, or ha living with family, having a bedroom for my daughter, all that stuff. It was never about that. It was about what I did seven years ago. And they took it on a hunch to see if I would ever do that again. Well, here it was. Four and a half years of the case being opened. I've had probably four different relationships through those four years. And not once I ever got the cops called on me for another domestic violence altercation. Not at all. Been off probation since July 20th of 2017. Never went back to jail. Never did domestic violence again. That's what I am saying. 
If it would have happened, it would have happened. And that's the thing that needs to change. If I have everything for my daughter of essentials and if I have a support group to back me up for that and I'm not doing domestic violence, you have no fucking right to keep my child away from me any longer. And you want know the last like week, this last week, I've been fucking torn. Torn out of my fucking mind, out of my soul, and out of my fucking heart. Because this month is just fucking bad for me. Like, fuck, my birthday's on the 30th of this month. I lost my mom on the 15th of this month nine years ago. And just a year ago on the 26th, I lost my fucking daughter. Yeah, my, you know... As in loss is like, you know, not by death, but, you know, because of the circumstance that what happened. I lost my mom due to death nine years ago on the 15th. So this whole month is just fucking bad for me. I've been in such an emotional roller coaster of fucking emotions. But the very last thing that of, the, of any emotion I ever want to feel is anger. And do you know what? I have finally... I have finally got to the point to where I can finally cry as a man and fuck what society thinks of what men shouldn't or should not do. Because I'd rather cry my fucking heart out and scream into a fucking pillow and let it all out instead of ever resorting to any anger and violence ever again in my life. And you know what? I am fucking proud of myself for doing that. I am so fucking proud of myself that I have finally and I, that I have finally endured all of that and benefited from that and educated myself from that and made myself into a better person because of that. And you know, there's so much other things that all of you don't know, even if you care to listen. There is so much more beyond the scope, so to speak, of what I have, of very little of what I've just talked about in this video. And you know what? I am going to do more videos because I want everybody to know the truth. I want everybody to know. Because when people found out that I lost my kid... I went fucking rogue. I was like a fucking ghost. Nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found, nowhere nowhere to be heard. Because I isolated from myself. I isolated myself from the world. Because I was exhausted. I was stressed. I was fatigued. I was beaten down. I was fucking oppressed and depressed. And... I had no more fucking strength in me. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to keep on fucking living. I took time away from the world to heal myself. To better myself. To have a better state of mind. A better thinking process. A better way of thinking in general. So my wounds of four and a half years can heal. And they're not healed at all. They barely just begun healing. But it's to a point to where I can function somewhat normally. Wake up every day. Go to work. Shit, even make my bed. Do my chores, you know, as in, you know, taking care of my place. Having my priorities done and taken care of, you know all that shit. Every that that everyday normal lifestyle of routine takes a lot of energy to do, 
And it's just unbearable when you're in that state of mind trying to come back from that kind of coming back from that kind of trauma and sadness and you're just mourn and just utterly just beating the fuck down in the fucking round. You know you know a lot of people say that you know losing your child is the worst thing. Yeah, that's by death. And you know what? I totally fucking agree with that. But doing it's even worse is you losing a child and knowing that 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 they're still alive, but yet you feel like they're dead because you're totally vacated, evicted from their life. And yeah, a lot of people say, well, Jose, it's just 10 years. 10 years is going to fly by just like that. No, it's fucking not. I'm surprised it's still, I'm surprised it's a fucking year since it's happened. Because you know why? Because it felt like it's been 10 years already. Within a year's time. That's how bad it is. And every day of t- keep telling yourself when you wake the fuck up. You, basically, you got to give yourself a prep talk to motivate your fucking ass to get out of bed and do the daily that you do every fucking day. This ain't some bullshit that I'm spewing. It is the fucking cold hard truth. And you are, yeah, I may be, I know, I may look upset and you know, I may sound angry and pissed off in my voice, but you know what? It's called controlled anger. It's called con- being in control still. And that's what I've learned just probably within the last few months. I'm not even joking. Like I have not been in this control, this in control throughout my entire fucking life to have controlled anger, controlled emotions, controlled feelings, you know, all that stuff, knowing that you're still in control. It's hard to fucking do, but do you know what? I'm doing it because I know the more that I do it, the better I will get at it. Yesterday, no, the night before, the morning before, yesterday morning, at almost 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up out of a fucked up dream. And of course, it was about my daughter. I woke up, and I was in a horrific cry, like a fucking child's cry. Like Like a cry that a child would cry because they want their parents to fucking hold them. That's how I was... That's how I was being. And the most scratchiest and like saddened voice of what a child's voice would sound like. I mourned in sadness. Why did she have to go? Why was she taken from me? I did everything. Why isn't she here? What did I do wrong? Why wasn't it enough? Am I a bad dad? Am I not good enough? Am I that much of a fuck up? I should have tried harder. I should have pushed myself more. All these fucking doubtful fucking things that I was saying to myself. Because everything that has taken its toll upon me. You 
It has psychologically traumatized me and fucked me the fuck up. And do you want? Know I've been to treatment. I've been to counseling. I went to see a psychiatrist, a therapist, a psychologist, a psychologist. I've done all of that. I even got on some antidepressants and mood stabilizers to see if it would help me. It didn't help me. It made it worse. I've done the necessary steps to help me cope with this shit. And here's another thing. Growing up, I really never had a family. I just had my dad. And my dad was more of a provider than, you know, an actual role model. He never raised me to do anything. He never taught me anything. He was just a provider. But yet, he was always there for me. My mom didn't do shit to raise me. Neither my brothers. Because they were the ones that were abusing me since I was like four years old. After I made that choice to drop out of high school at the age of 16 and everything else, I had to raise myself and and choose what would be the best course of action for myself. To raise myself, to know the good and know the bad. I did it by myself. I raised my fucking self. No child should raise them fucking selves. But I had to because my parents weren't doing it. Neither was my fucking brothers. I raised myself. And then do you know what? I fucking did it. Did I have bumps along the way? Yes, I fucking did. I had tremendous bumps. A lot of trial and error. Getting, falling off the fucking wagon, getting back up on. But I did not stay down. I picked myself up, dusted my fucking self off, and got back up on the fucking wagon and repeat. Fall off, get up, repeat. Fall off, get up, repeat. Fall off, get up, repeat. Constantly doing that. And did it pay off? Yes, it did. Because with the person that I am today, I feel so self-loved. I feel so proud of myself. I have so much respect for myself. And that's the most important thing. Is self-love and self-respect. And I absolutely love myself. I didn't love myself back then, but I sure hells do fucking now. And do you know what? I finally figured it out at the at the soon age of 28 years old. It better then than uh, better now at 28 than at fucking like 40 something years old down the fucking road. So now I got all that hardship out of the way and all that struggle of knowing the person that I want to be in life and all the challenges and obstacles that try to keep me back from being that person. I, I got past it. And now I can live the rest of my life having no limitation to bettering myself as a person and continue on doing that. So that means I can live out my 30s, my 40s, and my 50s knowing that I can always do better and make the right choices and the right decisions. Will I probably mess up somewhere? Yeah. But I know one thing. It's not going to be as bad as what I did in my fucking 20s.
And you know what? If you see any inspiration from this, I'm glad that you do. But you know what? Every time I look at my daughter's pictures, every single video, every picture, and every memory that I have of her, that, ho that hope that I have of us finding each other and continuing our relationship as daughter and father, it grows every day. The love, the care, the respect, the, the hope, everything of that. It grows and grows and grows and grows every second of every day that goes by. I'm going to hang on to that. And whatever my daughter has to say to me, I'm going to listen. And I will show her the truth of my part, of what I did for her. And that's going to be the defining game changer in our relationship. And she's going to know that her dad went through so much fucking shit and changed so much and did so much for her. Within health and sickness. You know, all the surgeries that I had, all the hospitalizations, all the trial and error. All the mistakes, all the rights, all the wrongs, all the sacrificing, all the, you know, time and effort and hours and minutes and seconds and weeks that I put into four and a half years for her. I did it because I wanted my daughter. I would do anything and everything for my daughter. And I did, and I exactly did just fucking that. And when CPS says that I'm incapable of knowing what's best for my daughter... And I can't provide or take care or raise my daughter. The only thing I got to say is, fuck you, Karen, set and spin. You don't know what the fuck I have done or been through for my daughter. And you know what? With everything that I did, knowing the exact truth, I am a good father. I am a good daddy. I am a great fucking parent. Because everything that I did, I would do such the same or even more if I actually had my daughter today. I would make her breakfast or give her money to go get breakfast at school. I would make her fucking lunch or give her money to go get lunch at school. I would pick her up. If not... I would have a family member go pick her up, meet her at home, make fucking lunch, help her with her homework, look at all the things that she did at school, listen to everything that she wanted to tell me. That would be so enthusiastic and so enthralled and engaged and interactive with what my daughter would be telling me because I would be so fucking excited, ecstatic to hear how my baby girl's day went. Because just seeing the sheer look on her face 
when she fucking smiles and giggles. That's what makes it worth it. That's why she is worth everything that I fucking went through for her. It's to see that fucking smile and hear that giggle come out of her fucking stomach. And she is exactly like me. She is a stand-up comedian just like her dad. She's going to be a class clown like her dad. Like all of you know me back in high school. She, she can handle her own. She's tough like her dad. She's smart like her dad. Anyways, I'm going to go. To anybody that sees us, thank you for watching. Whether it's here on the live or you see it in, in the news feed and you decide to watch it, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for not judging me. I appreciate you. And I'm grateful for you. And I thank you.